Yeah. <laughs> what a tune. I love my royalty free tunes. Hey y'all. Piping in hot from Austin, Texas. It's the Tris Marina Show. How you doing? Whoop. It is Thursday, October 15th at oh. 6 p.m. Wow, wow, wow. Isn't this the last day to get your taxes in if you filed an extension? Mm, yeah. I think it is. Yeah, but with the COVID and all, things are different. <laughs> things are different. Hey, everybody. <laughs> You're looking at two almost exhausted human beings. We're in the middle of moving our home, two homes, into one home. But we're surviving. Hi, Joe. Hey there, Barbara. Hey, y'all. Come on down. We're talking about shredding the past. What? What? Barbara, Joe beat you today. I don't know about that. I don't know. It's tough. That's a tough call, you know. You never know for sure because Facebook flips it around sometimes. <laughs> We might have to give it to Barbara just to keep her track record. It might be like the handwriting <laughs> contest in the second grade. For me, I won best handwriting so many times, they changed the contest to most improved. <laughs> it really hurt my feelings. Yeah, I, I heard about this. Yeah. I, I had an ulcer. Yep, and then you didn't want to spell anymore. Right. I'm sorry, handwriting. So she deliberately made her handwriting wonky, <laughs> didn't you? You, like, you stopped practicing. Well... What's the point? Yeah, if you if the if the scores are rigged, yeah, <laughs> you can't win properly. It's actually pretty tragic. Tragic. Right? It's no, tragic. no, no. I, the whole story is very, it's really tragic. Okay, the preliminary tragic story. Ready and should we kick off the show? Do you want to include the story in the show? Yes. Okay. Hello. Well, what do you guys think it should be in the show? The tragic handwriting. Spe is it spelling? No handwriting. That's a whole other one, right? The spelling bee. Is there a tragic story with that too? No, I just can't spell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we should. It's include. a tragic handwriting story. Okay, guys, we're gonna kick off the show with the tragic handwriting story. Are we all in agreement? That's okay. All right, here we go. Can we count it in? Oh, with music. Here we go. You know, we cut off the other part. When we remember. Count it in for us. Three. Oh, wait a minute. I'm getting naked. Just don't do Cut that. Cut that out. Stop it. <laughs> Ready? Yes. Three, two, one. One. Oh, we thought we were going to do three of those. Oh, okay. One. Two. Three. Welcome, everybody, to the Trispreen Show. And we're kicking off today's show with a tragic handwriting story. <laughs> if you missed the pre-show... <laughs> we also are going to be talking about something to do with shredding. Now, are we talking about shredding the past? Are we talking about shredding documents? Are we talking about shredding fat? You'll have to tune shredding in and see. Shredding on your surfboard? <laughs> okay. Treading water? No, shredding. Shredding. We shred on skateboards and surfboards, baby. Okay. Yeah, we shred. Well, that's okay. It's right. But for now, we were just getting into... Um, we always have this one student, and we don't know how she does it, but every time we go live, whether it's announced or unannounced, she's the first one in the door. It's like 100%. She is the champion number one on repeat for showing up first. Her name's Barbara. Yes. Today, my feed showed her as the second person, and it just brought up this really sad story for me. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Well, it's just how you find your way to these stories through Barbara's situation. Well, because Barbara, I feel what you may be feeling right now. That, you know, number one, Barbara's number fine. one, number one, number one. <laughs> and so what happened to me was in the second grade, there was a handwriting contest, and, and this will be quick. And it was printing, and it was on those giant rectangular pieces of green paper. Did you have those where it was a solid line, a dotted line, and a solid line? The dotted line was so you knew how big to make the little letters as opposed to the capital ones. And the teacher would write, her name was Mrs. Wood, and going down the hall, her our room was the last door on the right. And um, Mrs. Wood, she was older, and I really loved her, and she had a cabinet, and on top of the cabinet, was this black shoe box. And this black shoe box was full of treasures. So back to the handwriting contest. 
So every week she would write something on the board and all of the second grade classes, I think there were four or five, we had to write that on our green paper and put our names on the back and then they submitted them, this is at least what they told us, to a committee of, of judges. And the judges would pick out the best one without knowing who it was. And if you won, you got to get the black shoe box from down off the cabinet and have the treasure. Now this shoe box had things in it like Avon sample little tubes of white lipstick. It had, um, dolls made out of, uh, what are those things called? They're fuzzy, fuzzy stuff around a wire. What's that stuff called? What, what's that called? It's a wire, but it's all fuzzy. Like a pipe cleaner? A pipe cleaner, <laughs> yeah. It had things made out of pipe cleaners. It had um, perfume. It, it just, it was full of stuff and like the opportunity to look in there and take something and every week she would add more and I won the handwriting contest like every week let's say for 12 times and then what happened was I didn't win and it was because they changed the contest to most improved so nice. and it really really hurt my feelings because I felt like they changed the contest just so I wouldn't win the treasure but it the tragedy doesn't stop there there's more there's more I went outside um, to water so everybody got to pot a seed in a little plant so that we could watch it grow every day and they made these planters and I would finish my work early and ask if I could go and water everybody's plants because I always like to do the extra and when I was watering the little planters I noticed underneath the pots that the potting table was lined with green paper mm. It was last week's handwriting contest, and I saw my submission underneath these dirty potted plants that were getting watered. So not only was I completely disregarded for my expert handwriting and no longer able to win, they were using my works of art to line pots that were just gonna be thrown away. I can away. see how that would be tragic and, for a little girl. Yeah, that and, really and I, I had, digestion problems for a long time. Because no, because you were trying to be what they wanted you to be and you wanted to be your best and you wanted to excel. And of course, who doesn't want to feel validated as a young girl, but you know, that I was developing an identity yeah. and my identity was that I was going to try to be good at something and it was going to be handwriting. Can anybody relate? Did anybody have any stories like that where, you know, you felt like you were sniffed or sniped, you know, you were doing your part, you were doing really good and they cheated you out of that reward so did you ever get past this no now I write like a doctor without the, <laughs> without the degree <laughs> did you ever take this one to therapy uh-huh you did yeah by the way we think that doing that psychological work is really important <laughs> because these things can be weighing us down for years and years and years and we see some comments coming through about your situation here Oh, it's only eight. And that's the other thing. It's like we were hanging out with a three-year-old and a five-year-old last night. And sometimes you can disregard that they hear everything. Right? Whether yeah. they're your children or someone else's or your grandchildren, you can think, oh, they're not listening. But if I can remember all of that, and I may have just been seven, they are listening. They are taking that information in. They're maybe distorting it a little bit but they're hearing it. Like, I'm sure I distorted that. I totally took it personally. I heard, we changed the contest so you couldn't win. And they probably said, oh, it's now it's most improved. Sure. But those things, those activating events, they charge us and they weigh us down Did psychologically. Yeah. And I mean, who can't relate to things like that as a child? Heavy stuff, right? All, a variety of things that will segue perfectly in today's, to today's conversation about shredding the past because the past can affect your now, right? Whether you're aware of it or not, at the deeper subconscious layer, old stories, old traumas, old pains can <laughs> be inside pulling weight, right? I've often used the analogy of a computer where you have lots and lots of programs open and they're running in the background and they're hogging up 
all of the natural system resources needed for the computer to be efficient. And so we are, in that sense, like a computer, there's a lot of stories or open loops that never had closure, they're still running in the subconscious. So they're aging us, they're weighing us down, they're causing old reactive patterns to show up so that we're, we don't even know why we react the way we react sometimes because it's so far gone, it's, it's repressed, suppressed at this point. That brings us to today's shredding experience. Now, most of you probably know, and if you're new to our work, welcome. Satori Method is all about really living fully present, an awakened conscious life where you're clear in your mind, you're healthy in your body, and you're connecting to your soul. And constantly striving for just that ultimate handwriting. Always. Always. That's a very important part of our method. <laughs> so, get on it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously. <laughs> but many of you here, part of the community, you know that we've been in process of upgrading, if you will, from this home to a new home. And in doing that, and we won't bore you with the details, but we're going through the boxes. And we both had businesses, multiple businesses over the last, we've been here for like over 25 years. And so there are boxes and boxes of things. And Sabrina brought up an interesting point earlier. She said, but these were our identities almost stuffed into boxes, like pictures of things we did, advertisements we did, mm -hmm. tax returns, yeah. all this different stuff that we haven't really looked at. We haven't either had the time or wanted to. And so it's gotten piled up yeah. in a box on top of a box on top of and these mountains of boxes. Yeah and it's time to release these things mm -hmm. and so we've been going through them identifying what do you keep what do you release and we're really doing a, a good job i've got a mantra um, running all the time if it's not going to be used it's not going to come if i don't use this it's not coming and that's really helped so we got to the shredding phase mm -hmm. do you want to explain what the shredding is so shredding <laughs> what we did is we took boxes of things that needed to be shredded to an office store to shred them but before we get to that what what Tristan just said is I what I've been realizing is as I'm as we all move through life we maybe have different identities right like maybe career and then for some people mom and then maybe oh I'm a I'm a coach oh I'm a strong teacher and 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 it shifts and and, and maybe I'm all a few of them simultaneously because there's a lot of overlap and that's the way that I feel like it was with me. So I had all this stuff from growing my, my ballroom dancing business and my dance fitness business. Your acting and then career? From before and then um, the charity event, doing this whole ten production of, of 10 years event. of doing that. and maybe like keeping things because I'm proud of it I'm proud of it and if I let go of it does that mean that didn't I never happen. achieved it and it didn't happen and will I ever do anything now that compares to that like have I already done is that like the, the, a part of me could feel like but that's who I am. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm worthy of love. I did that and that and that. And I, I saw it goes back to that core thing of you're not worthy of love based on what you've achieved. You're not worthy of love based on the accolades that you received. You're worthy of love for no reason of, at all, which in the opposite is true. A lot of people say, I'm not worthy of love. I didn't achieve anything. Same ego. It's, e it's the same ego on both sides. So going through things and, and looking at them and going, wow, that's, I'm so proud of myself for, for doing that. And letting go and just keeping a few things that help spark the memories, but certainly not 12 copies of every newspaper where I was on the cover. <laughs> we had a lot of doubles. <laughs> A lot of boxes of things from the martial arts school where, I mean, we had thousands of students over 25 years come through the doors. So, you know, there are waivers, there are membership forms, there are slips to charge for things and all of this being protected. Because it wasn't digital. Yeah, in filing time. cabinets and locked and all that kind of stuff, but still weighing me down psychically, mm -hmm. knowing that at some point I've got to go through this stuff and release it. 
And so it's been a labor. And today we actually went to, so Brina found the place, office supply store, where they take everything and they lock it up and then it gets taken securely and shredded in a big shredder. And you pay by the pound. And um, I will tell you that there was a lot of pounds of <laughs> shredding that happened today. In fact, I've got a picture for you to show you. How many pounds do you remember? It was well over a hundred pounds. Um, so I'm gonna share a picture <laughs> of what it looked like. Just for a second. <laughs> at the shredding bay <laughs> okay so there it is <laughs> so you see that gray bin there um and sabrina you know got her hand on it there's two bins there's another one over there to the right and what you do where her hand is is you push everything into that little hole which we didn't know we didn't right? know again. So we thought we you took, just dump it in we took boxes and boxes we had to get a, a cart to wheel them all in there was like probably um, eight boxes right and, and because we're very respectful when we used to if we had forms of people's credit cards on them right or our own right. when we used to have everything mailed you know you want you, you want to shred social that. security numbers so you know we we took it in it was a couple hundred dollars and and it looked like a trash can with a lock and we're like okay what's the combination so we could lift the lid and dump it in he goes Oh, we don't have the combination here. You have to put it all through that hole. They were sliding and we're looking all these at these papers in. piles and piles, and we're just grabbing handfuls and shoving them in there as fast as we can. When we were done, <laughs> and this is again the way that you know the invisible agents line things up for us. The guys that come to dump the thing had just come, so they were both empty. Thank goodness. And they do it only once a week. When we left today, <laughs> they were both full. <laughs> I told Tristan, wiggle the container to see they how They were both totally is. full of our stuff. It was like, again, that orchestration's amazing. Yeah. So we walked out. But and one, one other thing, remember, we as we were shredding, there was one thing that I was about to shred that I kept. Oh, yeah. And written on the cover, it said Meditation Mastery. We had and it was just, a composition book. It was crazy because earlier today, we got a, a, a hit, an intuitive hit, that it's time to release our Meditation Mastery and Certification Program. So we were going through the curriculum <laughs> in between moving. <laughs> I'm, like, had, I'm like, I'll ride to Goodwill with you so we can talk about the Meditation Certification. <laughs> we had already marked off the curriculum and got it all worked yeah. out, but we just haven't had time to launch it. But we feel like, hey, this is a really great time to launch this program. So she's going through all the stuff and we're about to throw this thing. She's like, hey. <laughs> And it was a workbook that we had used to like deep dive into the curriculum. I'm like, what? That's that don't shred that. How'd that get in there? So that was really cool. So we walked out and and I'm sharing this story with you because of what I just felt when I walked out. I said to Sabrina, I feel like we just cut a thread. Mm. An old thread that had been holding me in a past experience or past identities because I'm not the same person. And yes, from all the papers and the things, I pulled the memorabilia that I want to hold on to. The first flyer I ever made as a young boy. The first advertisement I made with me doing a spinning heel kick. Did you keep mine with the... Yes, the yeah. picture of Sabrina doing you the elbow with that. the big bully from Be my first self-defense class in Beverly Hills. Before we dated, he hired me as a model. I did, yep. <laughs> She had her Reeboks on and her little socks and her short cutoff jeans and she's like, oh, you guys love this picture. Anyway, I went through and saved the things that I wanted to save that I felt like, yeah, I, I'm proud of this life and I'm proud of almost like scrapbooking, right? And then everything else, it didn't need to be there anymore. And there were things that as they were shred, as it was released today, I felt like it, it's that that tether, that thing that holds us to the past, we just need to cut it. And this physical action step for me, oh my gosh, guys, I felt like, the, I love this Abraham analogy of being a cork, being pulled down in the water by a piece of string, and the cork's natural propensity is to float to the surface. And all you have to do is cut that tether, cut that thread, and you naturally rise. Yeah into 
your source. But it doesn't mean the cork doesn't exist. Right. And that shredding today was a cut. And I felt such a freedom because we've been wanting to do this for so long. And I also had to surrender my old attached identities. And it feels beautiful. That's, my stu that's what I wanted to share. It feels yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And I feel so much lighter. So go and shred some stuff. <laughs> I want to show you guys a couple of photos. Um, I posted some ballroom, ballroom meaning like Waltz, Tango, Foxtrot, Quick Step photos on Facebook. And I didn't have any Latin photos. And I found I was doing a, a samba exhibition um, at a theater. And I think, I actually think Tristan took these photos. Let's see if we can get them in the camera. Okay. Oh. Um, okay, wait, I can do something. Look what I can do. Look what I can do. Okay. I don't know how close it'll let me come. There you go. I think that was doing a Volta. That was a, come back a little. There you go. Look that's, at that's those a, legs. That's a Botafogo. Look at you, you are one hot mama. <laughs> I. Oh my goodness, this might be my favorite picture. Really? Well, look at those back muscles, guys. Look at you. That's when I knew I, I got to marry well, this girl. Well, all I thought was no one ever <laughs> told me my butt was hanging out of that costume. <laughs> so beautiful. That was a $3,000 costume. Amazing. And then I found this. Let's go in a little closer. And that was um, from an episode. It was this was such a beautiful, beautiful episode. This is uh, from Variety magazine. And for a long time, I didn't talk about that stuff because I was like, oh, people won't like me if I tell them that I did stuff like that. I'll seem weird. I'll seem why different. Because you were a movie star. <laughs> movie star. <laughs> and. Um, so I got cast. So when you guest star on a show, you guys probably, I don't know if you realize this, but there's always the series regulars, but there's always one person that comes in that either causes trouble or causes somebody to really grow, and that's the guest star. And the show usually revolves around this person. So I was the guest star on Mr. Belvedere, and the, the high school boy on Mr. Belvedere was a virgin. In in the show. In the show. <laughs> I don't know about the rest. And, um, but, you know, we were older playing younger, so he was probably 22. Who knows? And, Definitely uh, not a virgin. He, um, so all of his friends told him to ask out Paula Sweeney, who was called Easy Sweeney, the easiest girl in school. And she had a really bad sense of self, and she had a really hard time with her family. She wasn't very um, educated, like culturally. She had never been treated nice. And so they all said, well, take her out and lose your virginity with her, and then take out somebody else. So you'll already know what you're doing when you take out somebody that's worthy of you. Mm -hmm. And so his name was Kevin. Kevin took me out. And he was a really nice guy, and he pulled out the chair for me. And as Paula, I'm like, what? What are you doing? And he tried to help me with my coat, and I didn't understand. Uh, Paula didn't understand what that meant. And he like bought me extra fries or some, something with dinner. So he was doing things that like a guy would do to be really nice to impress a girl, because he didn't know he needed to treat me poorly. And so I kissed him on the cheek. And he goes back and tells his friends, like, she kissed me on the cheek. And they're like, oh, you were too nice to her. Go out with her and, like, treat her, treat her badly and she'll sleep with you. So then we go out on the second date. And we get to a door and, and my character just stops, like, oh, he's going to open the door. And he doesn't. And it's really wow. sad. And then I get, we get to the food and he doesn't pull out the chair. And um, he takes all the fries. So he's redoing all those things and then we have this incredible conversation 
where he says, you know, I, I'm treating you like this because I wanted to sleep with you. And my character says, okay, everybody else does, why don't you too? And it was such a great conversation and character exploration because the network, ABC, had to figure out how to make Kevin the hero because he was the star of the show mm -hmm. and let me be a heroine, but a guest star who could come back again. And so he had to end up turning me down. Uh -huh. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but Variety, Variety Magazine wrote about how within a sitcom, a sitcom is a 26 minute comedy shot in front of a live audience. You rehearse for four days and then you shoot it twice live with the live audience and then edit that together and you shoot it in order and in sequence so it's more like a play or theater where a dramatic series is shot completely out of order and feels very fake to me. Anyway, that's what I shared that on Facebook today and just seeing that I brought back all those memories of um, the excitement of auditioning, the callbacks, the getting the role, getting the role and then um, having all the, the ABC there and they're making a big deal out of me and feeling fancy and feeling like it, that's maybe this is the peak of my life. <laughs> well, that's an incredible thing to accomplish in this life. and to Yeah, but so is planting a really nice apple tree, you know? It's yeah, all I that mean, I see you even the playing field at this point, but to be a young girl in Hollywood navigating that life on your own. By myself, yeah. You know, you had some big girl pants on there. You know, you had to really step up and you were following a dream, which yeah. was to express yeah. and be creative and have fun. Yeah, I didn't have any family living anywhere nearby. Or I think her life is actually an incredible demonstration of manifestation from a place of flow because so many people in Hollywood would literally, as they say, pound the pavement and, and really push and try and struggle. And she got a red carpet experience because of her play. She, meaning that she was always bubbly, she was flow, joy. It was very, it's always been a very attractive energy and doors have opened up for you because you approach things from mm -hmm. a place of joy and play. Well, I remember that I shot the whole episode with a rose quartz crystal, probably the size of my thumb, like tucked in my bra right here where you wouldn't see it. So I was- She was working her magic. I was, I was so into uh, that journey of love and I had already studied Buddhism and chanting and I was already meditating and trying to be very wakeful through the experience and I remember whenever I could I would bring something like um, uh, one of my spiritual books and, and try to get it on the table for my character or one of my statues I would try to bring something spiritual if they would let me to all of my characters so I felt more at home um, Beth and Doug are here, and um, I'll come back to that, but yeah, totally. It's, it's all these chapters of life, right? And that, I guess that's what's been happening with us, looking mm -hmm. at all these pictures. There's yeah. all, we're flooded with all those memories, and, and we totally know this is a human experience that we're all having, and that's why we're sharing it with you guys, because we're always looking for the little nuggets. Like, what are the lessons being learned here? Mm -hmm. Is there something that we can impart that would be useful or helpful yeah. to you. Mm -hmm. um, maybe avoiding some of the clearing out. And like Miss Bonnie is here and she's like, oh, I'm, I'm doing that right now. I'm purging, I'm pretending that I'm moving into a little house. <laughs> and that's really cool, yeah. right? Like I'm, I'm doing, a, not that I'm moving into a really big house, but I'm like, if I don't use it, it doesn't go. If it hasn't been used, it's not coming. And I don't want clutter in my life. Yeah. I don't want a bunch of boxes and I don't need to bring these old stories. I want to be fresh and new and the energy that that creates. It creates a vacuum for new. And, it does. And, and, and looking at everything as we shred it, it's uh, reflecting back, you know, I am who I am as I have journeyed through all these experiences, the ones that made me super happy, the ones that made me sad, the ones that were challenging, all of it, all of the relationships, the whole journey, it's been the exact mix to bring me to who I am right now and what mm -hmm. I'm able to see right now. And not to deny any of it, because you know, I saw some pictures of me hanging out with certain people and I'm like, gonna throw those away. And then I thought, no, yeah, you can, of 
probably did, um, but not to throw it away because you have to know what you want and what you don't want. You have to know what feels really good and what doesn't feel so good. And sometimes you need a little bit of that, ooh, that doesn't feel good, so you can change directions. Exactly. <laughs> so that's what's been going on with us. And that's why, you know, we, we love sharing what's happening right here, right now, today, not some teaching from a book or whatever. It's like our, your life is a teaching, right? Like pull the lesson to the surface. So what's up with you right now? You know, like what are you getting from this particular life lesson right now? Yeah. And the only way to really get the lesson is to be present. And last time we were live for the Trisprina show, we told you that we do a cycle with our students and each time the cycle is like a 30 day journey, it's got a theme. And our theme has been be here now. And for us, the only way to get through this consciously and not recreate old is to be here now and make conscious choices every single moment. So when I wanna bring those extra things and stuff them into boxes and find a home for them in the new place, I'm like, I gotta cut that thread. I'm constantly cutting that thread I was talking about be here now the person you are today who you want to be today and moving forward what is the choice that person makes who are you being right now are you truly have you learned the lessons to be present and make that sweet conscious choice or are you still the old story and i don't know maybe some people feel like wanting to break free and transform is judging your past I don't judge my past. I Well, actually, that's not true. I do. I sometimes look and I go, wow, that was a very compressed way of looking at life. Wow. And then I remember, but you were a totally different person then. And you were seeing through the eyes that you could see through then. And you were probably doing the very best you could. And you were probably the most conscious you've ever been during that phase. That's beautiful. There's no room for judgment. You're a beautiful soul on a mission. And here you are today. Like, love on that journey, mm -hmm. right? So don't judge our past either. Catch, the only way to catch that is to be present and notice what are you feeling right now. And so everything for me, if I could just sum up everything, is I'm just trying to remember to be in the vibration that I'll call love. Because that's where I want to create from. Mm -hmm. From this fresh, gorgeous love. Vibrating at the speed of love. There it is vibrating at the speed of love <laughs> yeah and to me giving myself a pass give myself a break when I look at some choices that I made maybe some actions that I did and I remember what I was feeling when I made those decisions are not in alignment with who I am now and maybe even at the time to a lot of people looking they'd say that wasn't really the most conscious thing to do there, Sabrina. But I was coping with what was going on in my life at the time, and that was the best I had. And that, like, everybody gets a pass. Everybody gets a pass when you're here now, right? Because none of that really exists. It's just the memory of it. So you're pulling out of your library of memories something that you did, and you're looking at it, and you're feeling crappy about yourself now. Mm -hmm. Why? Why would we do that over something that's, that's, that's gone? And so I've, I've also caught myself like regret. Regret's a weird thing. And I think everybody, you could think, mm, oh, I really wish I hadn't said that to that person. I really wish I'd been more honest with that person. I really wish I had seen who they were. I really wish I hadn't cared what they thought. I really wish I had said something when that guy did that to me. So those could be like regrets, but it's, I'm kind of reframing those thoughts to what I learned from that is that the next time something like that happens, I'm gonna choose something different because I'm bigger now and I learned from that. So constantly reframing so that it moves you towards what feels good. If you have a memory that makes you feel bad, then I think we need to, or I need to like spin it around 
and realize in the nowness of being here now, I want to feel good about things. Good that maybe it's over. You know, ah, I was a jerk with that person. They were a jerk to me. Uh, that was terrible. Ah, oh, I'm here now. I'm glad that's over. And what if that's the best you have? But still just trying to find in the now how to feel really good so that you can move forward from a place of joy and expansion. So good. This life is so good when we are awake. Seems like so many people are kind of going through what we are right now. Beth and Doug. Beth and Doug just moved from their home of 12 years. Mm -hmm. Shred it, says yeah. Beth. Shred it. Yes. <laughs> feels so good. It feels so good on every level to release. It's like that cork. The moment it, the tie is cut, off you go. Back to your natural floating state. So we hope this conversation has inspired you. And... Um, the spelling story is always a good lesson. So handwriting. Good, sorry, the handwriting. What? Okay, did you have a trauma with spelling? What's maybe, your... maybe I fell down and hit my head on a coffee table a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I appreciate your vulnerability to share about that because those old things, those initial memories, those initial experiences, those shouldn't be creating our future. They shouldn't be creating who we are today. Yeah. So if you can identify them yep. and go back in time and love on that little girl, and she was yep. already more than enough. I mean, you can see parallels, right? Oh, I'm winning the Avon sample lipstick on repeat, the treasures. So out of the classroom, I could feel like I want the treasure more than I want people to like me, but all the people that didn't get to pick it they're not thinking yay for me, right? So then I said, I, I, didn't, I didn't talk about my accomplishments as an actress because when you get to pick the treasure, the other kids don't like you. Right. So you, you, you'll, you can start seeing how these little childish things become part of your adult life. And then you can just say, stop it. Stop it. Just stop it. <laughs> <laughs> being awake and being in love is the great neutralizer to all of it. And then you can love on all of it. And you can upgrade that past, which is a beautiful thing. All right. Yuppers. We're going to go move some more stuff. I like to move it, move it. I like to I think move need, it. Ooh, I we're think getting you. so much love. Well, we appreciate all the love, everybody. <laughs> and we're going to say goodbye. That's right. Tracy says we have all... I've always moved around, but lately I'm staying in the same place. Hey, we need to do our, this is it. This is how we showed up. This is how we're gonna scoot on out. We're gonna boot, scoot, and boogie right now. Down gotta, to the home goods. Yes, yeah, right. I say right here, right now, I'm as happy as a coon dog in a prairie patch. Y'all be good now, you hear? Y'all come back now, you hear? Y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs> So much love. <laughs> Bye now. <laughs> <laughs>